I'm about to build the shittiest workbench you've ever seen. But first, welcome back. It's been a while. I'm gonna start here cleaning up my garage and clearing a lot of workspace to get this abomination thrown together. I'm gonna exhaust myself dragging a little bit of cardboard across the ground. <laughs> oh, wow, we. Good job, man. Take a load off. Way back in February, I convinced myself that instead of taking care of 100 more important tasks, it was crucial I demolish this cat box that was in our garage and replace it with a workbench that would help me organize our garage insignificantly better. Of course, I didn't want to spend any money on this, so I used available lumber around my garage and yard. After removing the top of the cat box box, we can take a look inside here and see that indeed there is a cat box in this box. Now, we have one of those automated cat litter scraper deals and my wife cares about our cat so i could not let the cat freeze in the garage which is why we didn't need this sucker anymore the frame of the cat box box was constructed with two by fours and a shelf was made out of one by however many inches that is boards laid across with the hole left for the cat box to sit in then that whole frame was wrapped in cardboard and then wrapped in house vinyl siding then the frame was screwed into the wall behind this looks like a pretty difficult thing to pull apart but that's because I made it a very difficult thing to pull apart by not being good with tools. After I swept up my mess from tearing apart the cat box box, it was time to trot my happy ass right on down the hill to collect some of that spare lumber in the yard. I really took my time measuring out different pieces of the lumber available. I wanted to avoid grabbing any wood that was too warped or weathered, or, or full of hardware. After I made a stack of my very choice pieces, I hauled my very weathered, very warped wood full of hardware back up the hill to prep it in the garage. Out fucking standing. The process to remove all of the hardware from the wood was as painful as you could imagine. I'm just speeding that crap right on along because nobody wants to watch all of that in detail or any of this in detail for that matter, but here we are. Between my hammer and my drill, I managed to get much of the hardware out, but what I didn't was broke off, and I just smashed it into the wood and left it there. I didn't care. I wasn't putting this through a planer. Some cracks were a little more difficult to uh, detect than others. I had to really feel the wood and, and turn it and inspect it carefully, then make a decision as to whether or not I was going to use the, the wood to support the bench.
after deciding which pieces of wood I would use for the legs, I took a few measurements, then started preparing for the cuts. And I like to prepare for cuts by stopping and sweeping as I do every 15 minutes of any project like this to not only keep my garage clean, but waste an insane amount of time. Sure, I get a little carried away, like an asshole, but goddamn if that wasn't some satisfying leaf blowing for me. You, you didn't see anything really, there was probably some dust coming off that screen, but I digress. Here I am measuring that tabletop that I pulled off of the cat box box. After I got those measurements, I knew how big I wanted my bottom shelf to be, so I started laying out boards to prepare for that fiasco. That fiasco involved a lot more hardware removal. <laughs> I am so dumb. After fighting some more cardboard boxes, I was able to get to the one of one of the one of the few things that mean anything to me in this entire world, which is my my DeWalt job site table saw. I I love that table saw so much. You might be wondering, is it safe to cut crappy lumber like that? Well, my answer is, it is always safe to fuck yourself. You very likely won't catch an STD that way. Mind your own business, politely. I ripped just a smidge off either side of these boards so I could have a smooth surface to glue along and, and butt up against another board and try to, try to clamp and, and form somewhat of a, of a shelf, but we're gonna see that a little later. It's, it's gonna be a mess. Spoiler alert. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not good at this. I apologize. After I trimmed down all the boards for the lower shelf, I flipped them back and forth trying to find the best side, which was ridiculous, of course. I'm working with wood that's probably been in the weather for 30 years. Go ahead, feel how smooth those boards might join together, you idiot. I gave that wood a good bonk. Then I started marking lines to, uh, I don't know, keep these boards aligned? These, these aren't marks that I'm gonna cut along, all right? Don't, don't get me, you know, confused with somebody that knows what they're doing. I use these lines to line up my, my screws. I don't know, I took extra time to make extra lines for no goddamn reason. That's the bottom line. Look at all of this effort that I'm putting into uh, trans uh, placing, that's, that's not even remotely the word, uh, it, transferring, just transferring these lines from, from the face of the board to the edge of the board. This, all of this, unnecessary, full, uh, full undisclosure. I'm not, this was, this was such a stupid waste of time. I, <sighs> 
after I got those boards set how I liked, I wasted even more time testing this clamp to see if it worked. And go figure, it did. It held it held the boards together uh, like you wouldn't believe. It there. See how firm that is. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. At some point during that day, I must have began gluing because there it is on camera as we are, are watching it right now. Uh, this took all of about six and a half hours, go figure, because I didn't just glue the boards, you know, like you might expect any normal person to do. Well, any normal person that's using good square solid lumber i went ahead and screwed the boards together that's right i forget the clamp forget about it tested that clamp for no damn reason here we are i'm i threw probably three screws yep must have been three screws because i measured those lines out earlier in the video if you remember and that's what held these these boards together but actually just kidding i still use the fucking clamp for some reason there it is you thought that i wasn't gonna use it i i probably shouldn't have used it didn't need to use it didn't make a damn bit of difference but there it is I couldn't cut any of this out. You had to see it. You wouldn't have believed it if I didn't tell it to you. There I am, waiting a whole damn day, coming back the next day. Yeah, it's there. It's it's firmly in place, held in with screws, and that, <laughs> and that one clamp, I, I just, oh, I got to take them. Oh, my God. Satisfied with a job well done by that single clamp, I move to the next step, which is cutting that shelf to size. Oh my god, was this a, a little bit of a process. I clamped a level, as you can see there, to give me somewhat of a straight edge, and then prayed I didn't hit any hardware that... Uh, I either had to mash into the board and couldn't remove or didn't see at all. I had as good a time as you can imagine cutting the edge off of a shitty shelf created from even shittier boards. But damn it if I didn't get it done, and it was time then to move on to cutting the legs of my work table shelf assembly, which was made quick with my handy $50 Facebook Marketplace chop saw. Here is the really rad part of the whole build. I used a speed square to measure out where I would cut some tenons. That's right, I was going to use traditional woodworking joinery as a part of uh, constructing this table. Then I went ahead and colored in all the little sections that I was going to cut out, so I didn't forget because I'm a silly goose. I wasn't immediately certain the best way to position these legs to cut tenons. Then I learned that this table I built way long ago has the wood sticking out just right so I could stand the leg up on the floor and use a clamp to hold the leg in place and just, just go at it. and go at it I did. It took 20 minutes per leg to cut these tenons out with with the handsaw that I have which I I am I'm I'm very certain is not at all the type of saw you would use to do this fine woodworking.
the tenons finally cut, it was time to use those very same tenons to mark the mortises or the place for the mortises on that top shelf or tabletop. In order to create the mortises, I fastened this fat hog of a drill bit into my drill. And instead of using that drill bit to drill out as much of the mortise as I could, I just drilled a single hole and then attempted to use my actual fine woodworking saw to go around the perimeter of the of the mortise and this if you couldn't tell is my first time cutting a mortise so back to the drill shortly after attempting to use the the little fine woodworking saw but that wouldn't be it for the fine woodworking saw no sir i came back with it i was determined as ever to use this son of a bitch to cut out a mortise i I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. I've got zero idea what I'm doing. Now that I had all that pesky wood out of the way, I cleared the remaining material, just the little bit of remaining material with this chisel so I could so I could fine tune the mortise and fit the tenon in with near mechanical precision. I chiseled for some time and then brought in my reciprocating saw just to get the mortise a little more mechanically precise. Again, just to be able to fit that tenon in all the more easy. And here we go for a test fit. It looks like it was not mechanically precise enough. So back to the reciprocating saw just to just to clean up those edges with a little bit of with a little bit of finesse look at that fit like butter it, I didn't think it would come together as well as it did, you know, all things considered. The shitty wood, the poor use of tools, the shitty wood. Eventually, I got all of the mortises cut, and I did a quick assembly of the table just to see how all of the legs fit together in concert and prepare to measure for the braces that I would fix to the bottoms of the legs to support the lower shelf. My 
more cutting means more table saw, bitches. That's right. I busted the old job site table saw back out so I can cut rabbits and uh, dados. Yeah, this right here that I'm cutting is a dado, and it's more semi-traditional woodworking with a table saw done incredibly poorly so enjoy that view excellent job joey i didn't leave the wood looking all terrible of course i came back through with my chisel and sharpened up my very blunt chiseling skills and knocked all of those pieces of wood out to form the actual rabbit not a dado i said that completely wrong earlier but I'm not going to go back and correct it. I'm only editing the video. With the rabbits cut and taken care of, it was now time to cut the dados. And I do this with several, so many, several passes over my job site saw since it can't take a dado stack. But I don't care. I love it anyway. I don't need a damn dado stack. Me and this this saw, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go the distance. I'd, I'll I'll take this sucker as far as I can. It it's treated me right so far. Any I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Anyway, together the rabbit and the dado cut in these legs is going to form a much stronger joint than me just screwing the pieces of wood to the other pieces of wood and leaving it there again like an asshole. I watch a lot of woodworking YouTube videos, and you'd think if I watched so many woodworking YouTube videos, you would think I would know how to smoothly assemble this bench so I could screw it together and glue it up. Well, you know, you'd, you'd think wrong, but I'm, you know, I, I, I like to make things insanely difficult on myself no one would see this coming once i got the table loosely assembled with the grace of god it held together long enough for me to get one of those braces in i was able to smoothly glue and screw the remaining three after that Satisfied with my shoddy work down low, I threw a bunch more screws into the tabletop to ensure that sucker didn't go anywhere, just in case that traditional woodworking joinery didn't uh, pan out in the future. It was almost impossible to tell just how level the surface of the workbench was but ah yes not level even a little bit no matter i would take care of that issue later now it was time to cut the lower shelf to size and fit that in the workbench
after another satisfying leaf blowing session, I took my shitty shelf back to the workbench so I could measure and mark out where I would cut spaces for the legs. Yet again, I tried cutting this wood by hand, and it lasted all of about too goddamn long before I said reciprocating saw. Let's, let's go back to that. Finally, it was time... Oh, forgot the shelf. Finally, it was time to bring the shelf over to the workbench and start fitting it into place. And foot stomp. Real traditional woodworking. After masterfully setting the shelf into place, I quickly set to work running around the perimeter of that lower shelf and placing glue all along the edge. Then I added, of course, a few more screws to secure the shelf in place. After an absolute minimal amount of sanding and collecting sawdust for God knows what else in the future, I got to work cutting the legs down to their final size and attempting to level the workbench at the same time. Ah, it kind of worked? Heck it, it was close enough and all in just way too many days work for this asshat. I didn't need anything fancy. I just needed a tabletop and another shelf to throw a bunch of crap where they were collecting in another area of the garage. Later on, I plan on absolutely putting forth maximum effort into a true workbench. At this rate, it'll probably be decades from now. Look at that craftsmanship. Anyway, thank you for joining me. This has been just an absolute pleasure, and please do not let me catch you watching the next video. Until next time, enjoy looking at this collection of crap that I moved from another area in my garage. <laughs>